Well, let's do this thing. <laughs> called Holy Moses. Um, before I play the vocal cut to that, uh, when these came out, to get two backing tracks, rhythms, with an instrumental and a vocal, or a DJ and a vocal, was occasional. It wasn't obligatory. Now, and certainly for the last 40 years, you buy a song, you've got the DJ, you've got the dub, you've got another singer, another dub and I mean I can remember in the 90s buying 11 or 12 records all on one rhythm. Now I had it bad. It's no good sending me one track. I wanted to buy the whole lot even if I had to drive to dub vendor and fetch the rest. It just had to be done and I laid all of those to CD and have downloaded most of them onto the computer. So I'm able to do play them should I choose to do so, but as you're probably aware, I'm choosing um, an area of time, more or less post-dates ska, but predates reggae. And if I'm gonna play reggae, it will be early reggae, not novelty reggae or boss reggae or skinhead reggae. It might come into it now and again, no problem, but usually I'm just doing quality, quality music. The lyrics. Big crackly. Like me.
whatever you do, you got to groove to the beat. Ken Booth, big man in other music. Sunday nights on Facebook. Fantastic. The hour and a half will fly by, I promise you. So what have we had here? We've had a couple of reggae tracks on one rhythm. We had a classic piece of rock steady there. Smile, give your face a rest. Ken Booth. And uh, I suppose it wouldn't be totally um, out of keeping to play a ballad. <laughs> Phillips. Philip Phillips. I bet you know where this is going. So much better in the bar. Don't look any bad, ever. Oh, he's singing the wrong words again. I don't know why I bother. Yeah. 
think you know what's gonna hit the decks now, don't you? Probably one of the best reggae albums ever put together. on the organ there. Leroy Sigal, Sibyl's leading the vocals. since in one shop seen so many copies of one album and I would say and I'm not prone to great exaggeration not unless I've had a couple of pints um, but I would say nearly every customer that came in that shop that day walked out with a copy of the Heptones on top there's not one single bad track lots of original studio one rhythms and because these days um, and last 40 or 50 years, really, everything that comes out on Studio One um, is not an original rhythm. Although there was that John T that I played in. My, anyway, I won't burden you with that. So, uh, sticking with the same song, we've got to have a little bit of The Prince. With his friend, Jarfender. Take it, Mr. Buster.
what we need now is a bit of Alton and Phyllis, I think, don't you? An organ and a piano. Winston Wright on the organ. Gladiator. Beauty. Alton Ellis. Phyllis Dillon. It was just always a no-brainer. And uh, when, when uh, I heard that, I thought, wow, this is like a bit of a throwback, because at that time, fast beat reggae was in its pomp. You know, we had real um, fast reggae, a lot of novelty stuff, but not bad, great musicianship and good fun. You had to get it, really. Um, so when that uh, got released I thought well, I mean that's a little bit of a homage to Rocksteady in a way because it, it was out of step but that was Duke Reed for you the stories are that he used to sit down in his barber shop and if he didn't like what was being played upstairs in the studio he'd fire gun shots through the uh, ceiling in the floor of the studio I've no idea whether it's true or not but it's a bloody good story and I'm happy to spread it around like wildfire so uh, the house band at um, Treasure Isle in Bond Street, Kingston, Jamaica, was Tommy McCook and the Super... Con you know what I'm saying. Supersonics. If only I had a supersonic attachment between my brain and my mouth, it would be a result. So, we've just heard Remember That Sunday. This is Sunday Walking. Oh, 
McCook was lucky to get the credit for this. Because at that stage, I would have said it would have been Winston Wright's name on the label. something of um, all of the uh, uh, Alton Ellis's treasure, not all of it, but vast majority of the catalogue, and it included this, which they say is the alternative take. Just play a little bit of this. Don't think there's any finish to it on this. Thank you. 
a break in this. one more on before we say goodbye um, no request for anything just the normal stuff really Paul Stillfelder on Facebook check him out Soulful Stuart Soulful on YouTube and he's linked that into Facebook his radio shows and his earlier videos just fantastic and there's also an hour tribute by David Rodigan on um, BBC iPlayer radio uh, an hour's tribute to King Tubby's, which is every bit as good as the original tribute that he did a few days after Tubby's was uh, murdered. Quite emotional, but wh what a contributor King Tubby's had to Jamaican music. You can't, you can't underrate it, overrate it. Either way, magnificent. So, uh, I'm under a bit of pressure to do a soul show from Keith Herschel. Uh, he's got his um, soul and R&B grouping on um, Facebook and some of the stuff that he posts. And then our mutual friend Tony Rounds posts and the accompanying notes. Their knowledge is incredible and probably their ability to do some bloody good research. But most of it comes from personal experience, which is, is the way I've always played it here. So, one last tune, nice instrumental by Bal Bennett. <laughs>
Taylor's Island, uh, Chris Blackburn really stopped and he released some sublime ska, rock steady, reggae, and island. And of course, thinking of King Tubby's on Island, who remembers Jacob Miller, Baby I Love You, and the B side of that? And Island reissued it as an A side. Augustus Pablo, King Tubby, meets the rockers up town. The dumb, melodic version of Jacob Miller's Baby I Love You. Absolutely and bloody tastic. So, maximum respect to Mr. Blackwell and his island label. Jimmy Cliff in the early days. Clancy Eccles. Delroy Wilson, when he used to stand up like great and get to the microphone. Singing Will Scott. Thank you everybody for joining me. Until next time, 